Hello to everyone. Uh, welcome to this training online session on first level controls. So we are we are very happy with Charles and myself to introduce you this first training uh, online session. There will be two sessions. Uh, uh, this morning it is the first one, and tomorrow morning there is another one for those who can't attend today. Uh, so first words of introductions. We, we hope that everything everything works good. Do not hesitate to, to make comments if you have any problem. Um, so first, first of all, we, we, we want to introduce ourselves with Charles. Uh, so I'm from Grand Sarton, uh, the leader uh, of this framework contract. Uh, yes, we, we were selected by uh, UIA initiative through this uh, framework contract of first level control. So Grand Sarton is a leader of, the, of a consortium. Uh, that was made with uh, Lai Labs, uh, represented today by Charles, who is uh, the director of this of this company. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so um, we we opened this uh, this meeting. Uh, so we are in this consortium, Grand Sorton Lai Labs, uh, and we were selected by the UIA to uh, to carry out these uh, first level controls. Um, and as you can understand already, this morning is dedicated to. Uh, of course, to, to, to present again uh, what is a first level controller, what, what are the first level controls, and, uh, and especially what is a, a, an ex ante control. Uh, so, uh, as, as you may seen or uh, as you may have seen already by, by emails, these uh, ex ante controls will occur. Uh, uh, in May, June, and beginning of July, depending depending your project and your cities. So we are we are we are we are carrying out. We are going to carry out these ex ante controls with Charles, and the organization that was chosen by uh, by the UIA initiative, uh, and uh, and we agree to this organization is that main uh, most of these ex ante controls will be done by a centralized team represented by Grand Sorton France. It means myself and my colleagues from Grand Sorton France and Charles Trouba from Labs. So we have this centralized organization for these eccentric controls. It means that for this, most of the, the projects, we will not involve in the exempted uh, controls local teams. So I had some, I, we had some questions uh, from you. Uh, regarding uh, this 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 organization, uh, of course, it can happen when we will be on the spot that we can we can face possibly difficulties with your local language and your local regulations. But we are we are we are aware of it and we are well organized to to address this uh, this potential uh, difficulties because in our companies, I mean on desk. In France, uh, we have we have the experts and the and and the people that that spoke uh, that speak your your language. So if we need to collect strategic documents that are in your native uh, and local language, of course we can analyze it uh, just just a little a, a little later uh, in our office. So that is the the organization of the ex ante controls. Uh, it is important, and you will see in the first part of this training session, uh, that you understand that we, it means Grant Sorton and my partner Lyle Labs, we will not take ourselves a decision uh, at the end of this ex ante controls, whether you will be paid or not uh, regarding the findings and the results uh, of our audit. This decision uh, belongs to uh, the UIA initiative. Of course, it will be enlightened by 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 our our findings, our results, uh, and our understanding of your of your uh, general control and management system when we are on the spot. But we don't take the decision. Uh, it is important that 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 you should understand this part. But we will come back later uh, on this topic. Last maybe last point. You 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 as you can see, I saw some two or three people already already wrote uh, in in the Q and A uh, space. There, there is a system of uh, question and answers uh, that is possible thanks to UIA initiative and and their WebEx platform that we use today. Uh, you can ask uh, questions to us. I mean to Grant Sutton and my partner uh, regarding 
generally first level controls and of course ex ante interventions so there are mainly three options you can you can use in order that you can ask to us questions and that you can you can empower yourself regarding the ex ante requirements uh, first of all you have a mailbox we we we, we created a, de a dedicated mailbox uh, we you all have uh, you principal MUA partners and I hope your local partners if you forwarded the email you have all this mailbox uh, generic mailbox uh, address so do not hesitate to send to us email on this mailbox right now I, we didn't have any 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 questions so we are a little surprised we are waiting for your questions do not hesitate to to write on this email box that is the first option this email box is open uh, since uh, three four days uh, and it will be open again during during one week uh, it means uh, till next Friday so please uh, use this mailbox so that we can we can filter we can sort out your question and we can prepare our answers and we can give you answers when we are when we are on the spot or by email second option after this first one you can ask right now your questions uh, thanks to this Webex platform so of course, we, we, we will not be able to answer uh, to the whole questions you, 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 can, you can send. So, uh, alternatively, with Charles, Charles and I, we will look at your questions and we will try to filter some. And, and we will have a, a space, a, a time to, to share together and to, to, to answer to your questions at the end of each part of the training sessions. So, you can also use this system on, uh, online to ask your questions. Just, we would like you just so that we can organize the questions uh, efficiently if you, before asking your sending your question if you can write the part of the presentation you want to focus on regarding your question so there is two big parts you will see in the agenda part one part two so please refer to which part you you you, uh, you send your question after ref uh, after pre uh, giving precision on the on the part of the presentation please refer to your city then refer to the acronym of your project and last at last please refer to your pp number uh, so that if if we can't directly uh, today this morning answer to your question we will have uh, an historic of your questions and later we can we can come back to your question and come back to you so if we have all this information regarding part uh, your city your project acronym and your uh, pp number then we can be more efficient on the spot to answer you at last you can you can you, you will be able to ask to us questions uh, MUA partners and local partners when we will do and uh, manage the opening meeting on the spot we have a two hours opening session uh, in which you can again focus on your project and ask uh, questions regarding your project to finish this long introduction, and I'm sorry about uh, this uh, long introduction, uh, there will be, because of you, you were many to ask this already, there will be a record of the training sessions uh, of today and tomorrow, uh, and there will be put by the UIA uh, communication and IT department, uh, they think they can put it on the YouTube channel dedicated to the UIA projects. So we will let you know and in, we will inform you when it will be ready. But uh, we know that uh, some ex ante controls uh, will occur very, very, very fastly. So we will try to be fast also to put this record on this YouTube channel. Uh, no, that's a YouTube channel. Okay. Yeah, YouTube channel. So we will, we will give you all the information about about this uh, this record. That's it for the introduction. Uh, Right now, what I propose you is to start the, the training session. Uh, so we will, in order that it is convenient for everybody, we will just close uh, the, the, the camera so that you can have the full screen on the, on the PowerPoint and the, the, the training document that we will, we will show to you. And so we will open a space of, of questions. We will fight all your questions uh, online, uh, lively, but we will open a space of uh, sharing and answering your questions uh, at the end of part one. And then at the end of part two. So I, we propose you to start now. Sorry for this long introduction and let's go on to the presentation right now.
Je ne sais pas les, les connaître. Je ne sais pas. Je ne sais, sais pas. So, here we are. Uh, for May, today, this morning, this first online session uh, regarding the first level controls, uh, the first level controls, and uh, especially the ex ante controls preparation. Because in during May, June, and beginning of July, we will intervene on the spot, Grand Sutton and my partner Lai Labs, in your cities uh, to uh, to to carry out this ex ante controls. So we 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 wanted to to give you this training session this information session about what is an excentric control and how you can prepare yourself uh, even if we think and we, we wish that we, you are already prepared to these controls. So two big parts uh, and main parts. Uh, as I said you, if you want to ask your question, do not hesitate to refer uh, to, to the part you want to, to, to focus on. So the first part is dedicated to uh, the project life cycle, we will re remind you what is the project life cycle regarding uh, the OIA project and, uh, and the first level controls. Then we will focus on, uh, we will focus on uh, ex ante controls. In the second part, Charles will take the time to, uh, to, to come back to the eligibility of expenditures principles. Uh, and then we will also finish with uh, repeating to you uh, what are the main expectations of the UIA initiative regarding the ex-ante control. And of course, like, like I, said, I said to you, uh, you can ask questions and we will try at the end of part one and part two to answer your questions. Uh, so. Okay, so first part, uh, project life cycle and first level controls. So here we are in the initiation phase, and in this phase, uh, we need to carry out the eccentric controls. So basically, you know that there are four main steps in your life cycle project, and we are in this initiation phase. So the initiation phase, is composed by a preparation step and a selection step. This step has been already done because you were selected as a, as a project by, uh, by the uh, UIA initiative. So these two first steps are the initiation are composing the initiation phase. Our exante controls occur in this uh, initiation phase. Of course, it is possible that some of you have already implemented the project. You have already uh, engaged and incurred some, some expenditures to, uh, to carry out and to implement your project. So we are in the middle, I would say, between the, 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 the phase two and, th and three, and uh, this ex ante audit occur uh, just, just at the end of this initiation phase. So the, the third phase is the implementation phase as you as you may know and the last one is the closure and knowledge transfer so as you know also uh, generally speaking every main urban authority MUA has already signed subsidy contract with the initiative uh, I know there are some cities and so some projects that are still pending regarding this uh, this subsidy contract but it should be a, it, should, it should be a matter of days so that you can finalize your signature. But generally speaking, the 17 projects that we audit in this ex ante controls have already signed subsidy contract with uh, the UIA initiative. Uh, and furthermore, uh, logically, after, uh, after this subsidy contract, you have already signed partnership agreements between the MUA, so the main urban authorities, and your local partners. So of course these two, document, two documents are fundamental for us uh, when, when we will carry out these uh, ex-ante controls and we will, we will start uh, by reading your subsidy contract and your partnership agreements with your local partners. As you maybe also know, these ex-ante controls must occur within 90 days after the signature 
uh, of your subsidy contract with the permanent secretary of the uh, UIA initiative. That's why we have a short delay uh, and, and, and a tight planning uh, to respect in order that we carry out the 17 ex-ante controls on, on the 17 projects before the end of these 19 days after, after signature of subsidy contract. Ex-ante ex controls in, in this environment, in this, in this system, ex-ante controls focus on the verification of the project, the economy, the general economy of your project, the general organization of your project, the general rules of your project. And of course, ex-ante controls focus on risk management systems that MUA, in collaboration with project partners, local partners, should have defined in this initiation phase. Uh, before implementing the project. So ex-ante controls aim at uh, verifying this global uh, management and risk uh, system that you, that you may have already defined. As I said you, locally, uh, we will not be surprised that the implementation may have already started in some, in some cities and in some projects, and it's totally normal. Depending our findings, as I said you in the introduction, depending our findings, what we will discover in these ex-ante controls, uh, our results will be given to the UIA Permanent Secretariat, and this uh, Permanent Secretariat will enable or not, will decide to accept or not the payment of the 50% amount advance that, that you are waiting for uh, regarding the ERDF funds. Coming to, to the ERDF payment procedure, uh, it's uh, here also uh, we come back to, to, to an information point because we think that it is clear to everyone, but we, we, we want to be sure that we have all, 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 the, all, the, all the, um, the timeline and all the steps in mind. So the, 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 EU, the UIA initiative payment scheme is based on the ERDF advanced system on payment and reimbursement of costs, like I said to you. There are four main steps, as you can see. Uh, the first step uh, will permit you to get your 50% ERDF, ERDF uh, advanced payment funds. And this payment is uh, depending, first, logically uh, on, the, on the signature of your subsidy contract, which are finalizing uh, in, 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 in few days for some of you, and on, depending also on the findings of the ex-ante control. That's why this ex-ante intervention and controls are strategic for you, like for the initiative, of course, in order that this 50% uh, advance payment can be, the, can be done and accepted. That is the first step, and uh, it is this ex ante control that will be done during May, June, and beginning July. The second step, I go till the end, uh, it is the advance payment of 30% uh, of ERDF funds, so we will reach 80% if you, if you accumulate and uh, addition, uh, if you do the addition of 50 and 30, so uh, you will have this 80% of ERDF funds. Uh, once you will reach uh, each other uh, at least 70% of uh, expenditures uh, regarding your, your, of course, your budget, your defined budget, and uh, to get this 30% uh, uh, advance payment, uh, the second advance payment, uh, we will intervene also uh, uh, on your project through a first level control it will be uh, an audit on your expenditures, so a financial audit. That is the second level control. Then the third step, there is uh, another payment from, uh, by uh, ERDF uh, funds, so it will be around uh, between, between uh, 10 and 20 percent of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the rest of, of the funds you, you will wait for, and here also it will be based on a financial audit based on your last progress report, so basically your, your, your last report, your last financial report, and if we validate as, as, a, as first level controller your expenditures and your project implementation, then you will receive this third payment. At last, 
uh, if if you um, there will be a, a retainment of, of a lump sum uh, depending the, the UIA guidelines and your subsidy contract you know you have a lump sum at the end that will be retained by 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 uh, European Commission and the initiative before before payment and this this lump sum uh, will be uh, will be accepted and and, and paid to you after approval of your of your final final documents and final do, uh, reports closing your project these are the four main steps regarding ERDF payment and procedures that are uh, available for uh, for your project um, okay so of course there is a first uh, level control intervention that is in the first step so the, it is the ex-ante uh, control there will be a second control a financial con financial audit in uh, after after you reach this 70 percent of expenditures and there will be at least a third a third inter intervention uh, at, uh, at the end of your implementation So this this uh, this Gantt uh, process is is a synthesis of what 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 we saw uh, just just now, uh, and it is it is putting all all the steps in a calendar. So I I let I let you uh, uh, acknowledge this this Gantt process. I will I will shortly describe describe to you uh, how how it goes. So of course the first step. Uh, for some of you still pending but very less uh, the signature of the subsidy contract as I said you so normally it should be done uh, it should have been done already uh, during March April uh, then we have this uh, ex ante audit up to uh, 90 days after the subsidy contract signature as I said you and it will uh, from from the result of this ex ante control will depend the payment of the 50% the third, the third line uh, in this count process. Then once you will have report at least 70% of uh, expenditures, we will, uh, we will launch financial audit uh, that can be both administrative, it means desk-based, or on the spot uh, at, your, at, your, at your location, at your place. Uh, we, will, we will launch this financial audit uh, once you will reach this 70% of expenses and from the results of this second uh, level control will depend uh, the payment of the 30% ERDF funds, as I said you before. Another step, end of the project after your implementation. Uh, uh, so we think that we should be, if you look at the, at the Gantt process, which should be at the end of 2019 uh, year. So once you will, uh, you will end your project, that will be the last final uh, first level control audit. And from which will depend uh, the payment of the of the lump sum uh, of the lump sum. So it is important, maybe in this long process, that you 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 can see and you can remember that your project started uh, be before actually before the signature of the subsidy contract, and you 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 can have already uh, spent and uh, incur expenditures uh, till uh, till your uh, from your selection. So. It is all this uh, from this point that the ex the ex ante will focus on. We will look from this point. Still in the uh, always in this first part, the second time of the presentation of the first part will be first level controls and ex ante controls. So we will focus more on what are the first level controls and the ex ante controls. So as you as you know. Uh, the first level controls, they are first, so they are at the base of the pyramid structure of checks. Uh, this pyramid structure is defined, of course, by, by the European Commission, and so there, there, there are many, 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 many stages of, uh, of checks. The first one, uh, as I said you, is the first level control. Here, inside this one, there are the ex ante controls. The second step will be the uh, I know, I know, another another stage of of the of 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 of, uh, of this uh, global uh, pyramid structure is the second level controls. So we Grand Sultan and Lilabs we are the first level controllers. We are not second level controllers. 
So we will we will stay at this first level controls, but I, I describe you all the structure of controls that will uh, that will uh, work on your project and that will control your project. So first level controls, second level controls. If necessary, there is also the intervention of the certifying auto authorities or the region uh, or de France uh, regarding the UIA initiative and the interested entity that is the UIA initiative. At last, if really there are some problems and serious problems, there can be intervention, of course, of European Commission directly and OLAF, which is a fraud, the fraud, the fraud, the fraud uh, directorate uh, at the European Commission agency. So first level controls, basically they are responsible and they aim at ensuring that all the expenditures you will declare along the, 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 the life of your projects are compliant with the EU initiative and national rules and therefore that these expenditures are eligible, legal and rational. So we will come back of course in the second part of this training session uh, on what means to be compliant with this, with this uh, regulation and what means to be eligible as expenditures. But what is important is that you understand, of course, we will focus on during this first level controls. We will focus on your expenditures and the, and the control of your expenditures, but the specificity of ex-ante controls are, uh, is that ex-ante controls will also focus on your, your organization, your management, and your overall system. It means rule, organization, uh, relations, uh, reporting systems, accounting systems. So all the environment that you built before implementing your project. So there is, there is an added value, I would say, of this ex-ante control is that we will, we will really understand how, how, you build your pro how you build your project, how, how, you, how you, you manage already the risk or you anticipate the risk that can, of course, happen in every project and in your project especially uh, during all the lifelong of your project. Third point what, uh, that is important to say regarding uh, these first level controls, and I said you in the, in the introduction, is that uh, the supervision, I would say, of the first level control, of course, it is centralized and externalized to our consortium, consortium Lai Labs. Uh, the ex-ante controls are centralized and externalized to Grand Sultan and Lai Labs and will not involve, uh, except some, some ex exceptions, uh, will not involve local teams. Whereas when we will go to uh, the financial edits, the second, uh, the, so the second uh, intervention and the third intervention, we will involve, because, because we need to, we will involve local teams to check uh, and focus on your, on, on your expenditures. So end controls will be performed at least three times, as I said to you, at the beginning of your implementation, during your implementation, and at the end of your project. So we are, we are the first level controllers. Basically, as I said to you, first level controllers and first level controls shall detect risk of systemic errors and correct them. It means in our reports, final reports uh, dedicated to ex ante controls, uh, and every time we will do a report uh, within this first level contract, uh, first level control contract. Of course, we will not only identify risk and and write findings regarding your your the, your, your the, the errors we can we can detect. We will also try to correct them. It means we will we will try to to define remediation action that can help you uh, and help the, uh, the uh, UIA initiative globally to, to improve yourself and to, and to make changes if we identify systemic errors at the beginning of our intervention. These first level controls globally, they should guarantee that the, the beneficiary, it means the MUA or your partners, local partners, has a sound uh, financial management and control system, as I said to you. We will come back later on what, 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 we, what we must understand behind this sound and financial management and control system. We shall guarantee also that the declared expenditures relate exactly to the activities and to the project that was approved by the initiative uh, through the application form that, uh, that you, 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 you drafted and that was accepted and that the expenditures incurred are 
compliant with the regulations uh, as well as with the provisions of the, your subsidy contract. What is a control? It is important to, to define because whether we talk of first level controls globally or especially of ex ante controls, there is, there is a common point is that there are controls. So what is a control? A control is any measure that we, auditors, when we will be on the spot or even if we are on desk, uh, any measures that uh, will be taken to, to provide a reasonable assurance, it means we, we, we can't avoid any, any risk, there will be always a risk, but we should be, as an editor, reasonable, assured that you built system and that you can avoid major risk. So we need to give you and to give to the initiative reasonable assurance regarding the effectiveness and efficiency of how you manage your operations, regarding the reliability of your reporting, the safeguarding of your assets and information. We will come back also to this point because it's important regarding assets and information. And it, it is really focused on your, basically on your security system, IT system, how they are secured and your assets, how they are managed and secured also. Uh, give, uh, provide reasonable assurance also regarding the prevention, detection and collection of fraud and irregularities and how we follow up to them. And regarding the appropriate, adequate management of the risk. So every project has risk. I would say that a project, if you say to us that your project has, has no risk, we will be more careful. So please, you should be aware that every project has risk. It is totally normal. But what expects the European Commission, the UIA initiative, in this project and we will be very careful and very, we will focus our controls in next on, on this is that you define and of course you implement uh, you deploy a management of risk taking into account of course the complexity of your project as you as you as you know because you have many local partners so you you really you need to spend time and to 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 to, to invest in this in this initiation phase to, to build your management of risk system. And of course, uh, we will work through checks uh, as you will see when we will be on the spot. So if I, if I should focus on, 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 on three points, on uh, ex-ante controls, first is that ex-ante controls take place during this initiation phase, as I said you, and in any case, prior, prior to the payment of the first uh, advance payment. Uh, so it is, of course, an obligatory step for all uh, principals, MUA, and uh, for their partners. Uh, according to that, uh, the UIA initiative decided to, 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 to do a sampling of partners uh, that will be controlled during this ex ante uh, controls. So there is a sampling. We will not check all uh, the partners. Uh, but some of them has, has been, have been selected to, uh, for these ex ante controls. The purpose of these ex ante controls, if you, if you should remind something, it is, this, it is to ensure you build your system of risk management and your, your project management system, but it is also to ensure a quick and efficient start of the project. It is important that this management system has been defined in order that during your two or three years of implementation you have the tools, you have the methodology, you have the, the reflex, you have the, the, good, the good system to manage and to, uh, to deploy efficiently your project. Second focus and what you should remain is that ex ante control should also check special points and, 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 and uh, we will pay specific attention to, uh, uh, to the public pro uh, procurement procedures and policy uh, that, that you can carry out at your level. So, uh, so we, will, we will surely focus on, 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 this, on this topic uh, regarding public pro procurement policy and procedures. Last point we wanted to focus on regarding these ex ante controls is that these controls will make also a physical check of your investment locations and resources. 
in the project because because we know that sometimes you can have huge investments uh, in your project. Uh, it is it is a strategic point that we need to check uh, during these ex ante controls. It is how you plant and how you manage already uh, all along the three years. How how you de how you design your planning regarding the investments you will you you will do. Focusing more again to ex ante controls. What is important, and we, we, we it is our philosophy, I would say, uh, regarding these ex ante controls, is that of course uh, they are not done uh, top down uh, with a top down methodology. We really worked uh, on this uh, ex ante controls checklist and, and 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 methodology with the UIA initiative in order that these ex ante controls are well aligned with the UIA. Uh, strategic objectives and projects objective. What does it mean? First objective of a UIA project, of your project, as you have been selected for this reason, is that your project should be innovative. What is the impact for the ex ante controls? We will do. Regarding the innova innovation or the innovative aspect of the project, there will be no major impact or no major orientation regarding our XRT controls content. It is not a dimension that will really uh, define our controls. Of course, we will check the innovative aspects regarding what, what you signed uh, with your application form, subsidy contract, and so on, but it will not impact our assertions, our questions, or our checklist so far. Second dimension, as you know, your project must be particip participative. And for this dimension, there will be impact on our ex ante controls uh, because uh, when we say that your project should be participative, it means that it must involve the key stakeholders locally or, uh, or through Europe that we bring to you uh, as principal and that we bring to, to the project life, I would say, that we bring expertise and knowledge uh, both during the design phase and the implementation phase. So, of course, we will check regarding the management system, the, re the relations uh, you have already with your partners, how they are involved in this initiation phase and later on in the implementation phase. So, of course, we will try to detect and to assess uh, if there are risks, or if there are lack, or if there are uh, weaknesses regarding effective mechanism of consultation, coordination, and co-design uh, of your project in order that your project can be fully participative at, at it should be. So we, we can focus on, on many aspects, but uh, just, a, just a, short, a short list. Of course, we will look at your work package definition and implementation. Your project monitoring and shared management tools. Uh, we will be very careful about what tools you you were engaged to to develop uh, in your in your initiation and implementation phase. Uh, what is the maturity of these management tools, and if they are efficient and effective uh, in order to involve and to and to make effective relations with your partners. Of course, we will check also if there are meetings, if there are uh, uh, memos of meetings and so on regarding this participative aspect. Third dimension, as you know, you made, you, you should, your project should be made uh, of good quality. So it will, it will impact our ex ante controls uh, because we will check that you defined realistic ambitions, coherent activities and effective management to deploy and to carry out this, quali this quality, to guarantee this quality. So, of course, we will every time compare uh, and, and check that your budget or your expenditures or the system you defined to, to manage your risk and your project management uh, is well dimensioned, is well uh, sized, uh, is well defined, is, is realistic regarding your project, regarding your budget. So we will have always this comparison between your ambitions, you know, the project ambitions, 
the, 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 the budget you defined and if your, the first activities and the first system you developed in order to, to, to guarantee this quality are proportionate to these ambitions and to this budget. For this quality, also we will check that you define a logically interlinked work plan, uh, a coherent and proportionate budget, as I said, as well as an effective management arrangement that will make things happen. What does it mean? It means we will check if you have, a, of course, a sound financial accounting and budgetary management system, if you have internal control procedures and risk management system, and if you have also an accounting, a detailed accounting and, and a detailed vision of how a pro the, your project will go uh, during this implementation phase till the deliverable, deliverables and outputs expected in your project. So, of course, it's a summarize of impacts on, a, on, a, on our checklist controls, but uh, they are the main, the main ones. Your project must, must be measurable. So, there is an impact of our, uh, there is an impact uh, to, uh, in our extent controls. As we, when we will be on the spot, uh, we will try to identify and to check that you defined clear uh, expected results and indicators uh, regarding your project. So we will, we will basically try to check that you have defined or you have, you have already think about and you have worked with, with the participation and the collaboration I, 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 I referred before. You have already worked on evaluation and measurement system for your project, of course, of defining actions and targets and of uh, uh, defining indicators that can be impact indicators, uh, realization indicators, efficiency indicators, and so on. At last, the last dimension is uh, the transferability of your project. And this point will, be not, will not uh, generate major impact of, uh, on our ex-ante uh, controls content. Ex-ante controls, we explain you how they articulate themselves with the first level control. Uh, what are their specificities? Maybe we should remember to you, because it, is, uh, it will be our, uh, our topic as an auditor, always to check that uh, we, have, we have the good standards, the good references to, 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 to implement these ex ante controls. So there are three main standards. Uh, there are others, but, uh, but they are the main ones. First, first standard, uh, it means the, the, our rules, uh, Grant Sutton we will, we, and LILAPS will focus on these rules and how you apply them. Um, there is first the, the European Union EFRD regulation, so with the specificity that you are very close to the management uh, of interreg projects. So basically, we will, uh, the, uh, the eligibility of your expenditures will be checked through this standard, mainly. Of course, we will also be uh, vigilant to apply the UIA initiative regulation. It means what, what are the documents, strategic documents that manage this initiative regarding you, MUA, and your partners. So there is a term of reference when, when there are call of projects. So the first one call of, of project that you answered. And uh, of course, then uh, the delegation agreement between European Commission and the UIA initiative that announced some rules to be respected by the, uh, the UIA initiative and that de facto uh, come, come back to you after, afterwards. Lastly, there is a national regulation, your, your regulation. Uh, that's why every time we have experts, of course, that talk your language that can help us to identify risk in your strategic documents or your strategic procedures that you defined, but, uh, but also we have, as Grand Sutton, we have firms all, uh, all, uh, through all the 28 uh, countries involved in the UIA initiative, uh, and so if we have specific points with uh, local regulations, we can refer to, uh, to, our, to our team locally uh, in order to, to, uh, to get the the answer on, on specific and, and, and strategic points. Lastly, uh, if we want to, to close this uh, ex-ante control explanation, the main objective of ex-ante control is to assess your financial management. In particular, 
for ensuring that your operation comply with the UIA initiative funding criteria that you all already know and that uh, I explained to you just before regarding the, the five the five dimensions of, of, of your projects. In particular also for verifying that uh, co-finance products and services are delivered and that your expenditures are uh, declared uh, and compliant with the ECN national rules. Uh, maybe, but I think we will say it before later in this training session. Remember that even if there are some standards that we need to respect on certain labs regarding our controls, every time it is a stricter, the strictest rule that must be applied by yourself and so by ourselves in our control. So if your national rules are more strict, are strictest than a strict than uh, the European rules, it will be your rules. So it is important that, uh, of course, you have in mind all these standards, but also that we will, our standard will be always the strict, the strict test uh, principles and rules uh, that that may uh, that may exist. Um, ESA objective objective will ensure that beneficiaries, so yourself and your partners, uh, involved in the implementation. Uh, maintain either separate accounting system or adequate accounting code for all transactions so that we can we can we can efficiently identify and check what operations belongs to the principal and to the to, and to each uh, local partners uh, of course we will check that uh, you all beneficiaries uh, have been setting up procedures general procedures regarding uh, all the dimensions we will, we will decline after uh, and with the audit trail that will help us to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to build our findings and our results in the reports. Uh, of course, we will uh, verify regularity and legality and proportion, proportionality of your expenditures of expenditure declared and compliance with information and publicity requirements. Priority checks, because there are some that we, we, we can't avoid when we will be on the spot or even even before if we have the documentation uh, by, uh, from you before uh, in order to prepare to prepare efficiently our intervention on the spot there are some priority checks that we will always uh, carry out bank account uh, regarding bank bank account details your VAT status the legality of your partnership agreement the risk of fraud or bankruptcy of your entity, the locations and resources dedicated to your main investments, and at last, of course, as I said, your basically your uh, procedures. Bank account details, we will check, of course, every time as a, as a priority, it means we will check that the bank account should belong to the main new bond authority who is responsible for the project. VAT status, we will check if your VAT status is coherent and correct regarding the nature and the, the, yes, the nature of, of the entity and if you are eligible or not to the reimbursement of VAT. Legality of the partnership agreement, it means that of course we will check if there are any illegal clauses in these agreements. Risk of fraud and bankruptcy. Mainly, it means that we will check uh, if the uh, if the project all the project partners uh, can have risk of fraud or in verge of bankruptcy. So we will we will we will of course look at the solvability of of the, of the entities, and we will be uh, very uh, very careful about about this uh, risk of bankruptcy. Locations of investment. It means we will check the physical uh, physically. Uh, the plan investment locations and resources and at last as I said the first level control procedures we will you will define to have a sound financial management and control system to have compliant public procurement procedures and to respect also uh, in-kind contribution rules and uh, we will check that every time on every topic we will we will we will, we will check regarding excellent controls that you build and you uh, you guarantee to us and to uh, the UIA initiative audit trades, it means documentation of your operations. Ex-ante control areas, so 
as I said you, they are focused on internal control and risk assessment. You will see when we will intervene on the spot, every area that I will define now is declined by assertions and questions that we will, we will, we will address to you, to, to, to each of you, with every time point, points of controls. Your answers will be reported, verified, assessed through risk standards and documentation. It means your audit trail. What are the EAC ex-ante controls areas? And, and these areas will be reflected in our checklist when we will come uh, on the spot. General aspect, of course, as a, as a preamble, as an introduction, we will have questions and, and specific checklists uh, to address regarding the management of the project. And this, this topic is mainly focused on the responsibility of the coordinator, the, major, the main urban authority. First operational, I would say, area after this uh, acknowledge of your environment and introduction, we will check the, moni the monitoring of your project and it is not only focused on the coordinator, it involves also the local partners. Second areas, your asset management. It means how, how you define the uh, procedures and rules and do the, uh, are, they, uh, are they compliant with the regulation, are, are they uh, regulars regarding how you manage your assets. It means your, your main, your main uh, investments that will be done during the implementation of the project regarding equipments, regarding infrastructures and constructions, uh, regarding outputs and deliverables that need investments. So we will check how, how, you, how you manage these assets, what are the rules sometimes of depreciation that you can, you can, uh, you can, you can, uh, you can define. Uh, and uh, what is uh, the security system you built to guarantee uh, the safeguarding and the, uh, and, and the integrity of, uh, of the assets that, that you, will, uh, you will develop through, through your project. Another area that will be always present in our checklist will be the procurement process and procedures that you apply. Uh, so we will check, of course, if they are compliant with uh, with the strict the strictest principles and rules that can that can exist at your at your at your local region or uh, nationally or uh, in at the Europe level. The the, the fourth uh, area is regard uh, regards to cash and bank management. Fifth area refers to your accounting and reporting system. Sixth area refers to your IT systems, how they are defined, what are their, their integrity, their security, uh, who has access to, to which information, what are the, the, the information flows, and so on. Seventh part, of course, the expenditure controls. And finally, we will focus on your human resources, the staff cost, mainly. But, but not only the staff cost, also how I manage the, 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 main, the human resources. That is a, the, the, the main areas regarding, that, that, that were the main areas regarding uh, risk uh, system. There will be areas specific to the monitoring of projects and analytical accounting. So we will check first the, how you monitor activities and costs. It's a summarize. Of course, it's a little more detailed in the checklist, but you have the main, the main topics we will, we will check on the spot. It means how you monitor activities and costs. And costs it means what, what is your strategic, strategic plan, planning and project uh, management system. How you manage your, bu your budget forecast and updates. And what are the project performance indicators? As I said, you what is your 
measurement and evaluation system regarding your project implementation and monitoring. That can be also indicators evaluating in itinerary the monitoring, the quality of monitoring and the efficiency of monitoring your project. Second aspect of monitoring of project will be, of course, we we'll check the segregation of duties and functions uh, in every project. It means at the level of the project management, basically uh, what is the, the, the functional organigram, the functional organization uh, in the management of your project, basically who do what and when and with who and based on what documentation. Accounting, so who, who manage the accounting and what is the segregation of tasks and duties and functions regarding accounting. It means we will check, of course, that who, who do the payment uh, is separated to the person that validates the payment, for example. This is a simple example of, of, a, of a segregation of functions that we will, we will check regarding the accounting and the financial, financial dimension, I would say. And of course, like I said, the payment. It's a, because it's the more strategic, we will, we will be sure that the payment is it's well organized uh, regarding the expenditures that you you incur, you will incur or you already incurred uh, during the implementation or even uh, during the preparation phase. Another aspect it is how you monitor your partner's costs. Of course, there should be a parallelism approach on your monitoring uh, regarding your partner's costs. Uh, there should be a parallelism between how you monitor your own as principal and main urban authority, how you monitor your activities and costs, and also uh, they should be parallel and they should be uh, coherent with the, the, the methodology you, you, you carry out to, to, uh, to monitor your partner's cost. Monitoring partner's cost, it means how also you, you follow up the budget at each, uh, for each partner and how partners, or of course, monitor their own budget. It is every time at the, at the both level. And uh, monitoring partners' costs, it means also how you both collectively, you, you ensure uh, that you have a compliant purchase procedure. At last, expenditure control. Of course, we will check your procedures. The, your accounts reddition and budget comparison. It means how, how you how you how you how you how you how you you issue and how you how you build in itinerary your account uh, and how you manage the comparison of budget uh, between the what was what was planned initially and what is uh, the reality of your project, the consumption of your budget, and at least at last sorry. Uh, Regarding expenditure controls, we will check the compliance with regulations and your term of reference. So th there are a, a, summer, a summary of uh, the two aspects of EAC areas controls and that will be contained in our checklist. First, as I showed you, uh, the risk assessment system and secondly, uh, the monitoring of your project. Coming back to the methodology, because uh, maybe you already have, again, questions regarding this point. Uh, organization of ex-ante controls. Four main steps, and you were already involved in the first one and right now in the second one. First one, planification, as you may see, and we, totally, uh, we are totally aware of the, of the short notice and the short delays we have to carry out this ex-ante control. So we, we really count on your, on, your, on, on your availability, on the dates we, we propose to you through emails. Um, we propose to every main urban authority project managers uh, dates of interventions. So most of them are, have uh, already confirmed and uh, the intervention is already planned. Uh, some are still pending. We really count on your on your availability and your confirmation as soon as possible, so that we can we can uh, carry out efficiently this ex-ante control. And we have no choice. We can't we, we can't we can't avoid to uh, to intervene in May, June, and at, at last beginning of July. Um, 
what is important for the information all, of all principles that they know it but also and most of all mo most important it is to that I communicate this to the project partners because maybe uh, there are some uh, some confusion this proposition of dates were issued and were sent to the principals to the main urban authorities that have the responsibility to inform and to involve uh, all the local partners so this planification has been made like this. Second step, training. We are we are right now doing this uh, this uh, this uh, exercise. What is the process? So online training station and uh, ask uh, and questions. So first, uh, two training sessions today and tomorrow. Email box open till the 12th of May. So do not hesitate again to send to us our questions. Uh, and it is very important because we are two here and we have two laptops and we, we since the beginning uh, we think that you send questions but we can't see the, the questions we have we have a logistic problem when we will when we will change and switch when Charles will we, we, we'll talk and 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 uh, and, uh, and uh, take, take uh, and uh, do the training after me uh, continue the training after me I think I, I can see your question but right now you can't see the question on on, on, the, on this part that I, I, I make now so I, I, I will I will uh, acknowledge your uh, your questions when I will finish to talk uh, and I'm sorry for this so do not hesitate uh, to also to send uh, really questions to uh, the FAQ email box and as I said you in the in, in the introduction these trainings sessions will be recorded are recorded right now and will be and will be at your disposal as soon as possible. The objective of this training and information uh, uh, sessions are changing. It means it, it, it must help you to prepare, to to adapt, and to uh, and to uh, and to uh, and to adopt the correct the correct uh, behaviors, the correct tools that we will need to check on the spot. Third, third step, sorry, on the spot. So it will be uh, very soon for, for some of you. Uh, how does it work? We, asked, we had some questions from you regarding the schedule day. Uh, what is exactly the schedule of our intervention when we will be at your level on the spot? We are sorry, but we can't, we can't answer you with, pre, uh, with precision and definitely about, about this schedule because the purpose of ex ante, if I want to to uh, to be short, it is also to 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 make and to provoke like a surprise for you uh, and for us also. So we want we want we won't have any a priori before coming on the spot. We won't have a, a specific pre predefined schedule. What is important is that we identify, if possible previously uh, our intervention that we identify the main professionals the main project managers at the MUA level and of course also at the at the PP level project at the project partners local level uh, that we identify the project the project the main project managers and then when we will op open this uh, this uh, on the spot intervention uh, when we will uh, open the, the the first meeting we, we will adapt ourselves and we will understand uh, who we should meet first, who we should meet secondly, uh, and who we should meet maybe maybe a person that we you didn't identify and you didn't communicate to ourselves. Maybe we will need to 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 meet another person. That that's really a short a short uh, example of how we will proceed. We have not a predefined schedule. Even if we will try to have an homogeneous intervention, it means basically every time when there are uh, MUA and local partners, we will spend uh, two days, uh, two full days at the MUA level and one day for each local partners we need to check. The two first days they are composed like this. The first day uh, there will be an opening meeting. This opening meeting uh, objective 
is to introduce ourselves again for the people that can't attend this training session, of course. It is also to, uh, to if, if it is necessary, to remind you what is an eccentric control, what we will do during the, the, the days we will be with you. And it is also to, to acknowledge who are you uh, at your level, in your entity, what is your organization. And from this, from this meeting, we will also, thanks to this meeting, we will also answer your questions regarding eccentric controls. So, if you can ask to us questions before through the email box or right now, we, we can identify your project and we when we will open this meeting, we can we can refer to your question and answer to your questions. So this it is a two hours meeting, opening meeting, the first day. Then we will continue at the MUL level. Uh, it is important to know, sorry, that this opening meeting gather of course the MUA, the MUA, but also all the local partners. And not only uh, not only the local partners that we, we will uh, we'll check. That can be all your partners. So it is an information also meeting. So it is important that the MUA is available in here, of course, because we will be at, at, at your location. But you must, you are responsible to, to, to inform your local partners that they, they should be and they must be uh, in this opening meeting. Then there will be free. We stay at the MUA level to finish the first day, and so we, 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 will, we will start with, the, with our checklist and our first meeting on the spot. Second day, we stay at the MUA level to finish our controls at the MUA level. And then third day, if there is a partner, we will go to the first partner and so on. Every time, one day per partner. We will go to the partner location. I hope it is almost clear. So no predefined schedule, but I mean a general methodology that we will try to, to, to maintain uh, homogeneously uh, everywhere in every, every cities uh, where we will intervene. Last step, deliverables, um, with the main word at the end that is, as you may know, the payment. Deliverables, what, what is inside? Inside there are reports. Uh, ex ante reports, audit reports, with findings and checklists that we will give directly to the UIA Initiative Permanent Secretariat. In this report, you will have specific and detailed opinion of the auditor. There are four main or three main uh, opinion, type, kind of opinion, can be an unqualified opinion, a qualified opinion, adverse opinion, or disclaimer opinion. Basically, either we accept totally uh, your system, your management and risk system, we identify it like uh, relevant and, and, and sound, and you will have, uh, we will accept uh, the payment, and the UIA will pay, or we will accept with uh, disclaimers. It means we, we, we will, we will, we will uh, point out some, some uh, weaknesses or some, uh, some risk uh, that needs to be, to be addressed. But it's not, uh, it, will be not, uh, it will not avoid the payment. Just you will have to improve very fast yourself. But if this, it will be an acceptation with reserves and disclaims. Uh, at last, you, there can be an adverse opinion. It means really, uh, uh, we, we wish we wish that it will not happen, but uh, we never know. It means we will decide from our side that you didn't you didn't gather the minimum requested uh, uh, system uh, to uh, to manage your project, to monitor your project, to monitor your partners, and to monitor and manage your risk. So consequence on advance payment regarding these different opinions, of course approval of payment or non-approval of payment. I finished my part. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, when I will uh, now give, uh, give access to, uh, to my colleague to, to, uh, to, to explain you the second part of this training session regarding mainly expenditures, uh, controls, and uh, MUA, uh, uh, sorry, UIA uh, initiative main, main exp uh, expectations. Uh, when my colleague will, will be talking right now, I, I, I hope, I wish, I, uh, I can see your questions. Uh, so, you can continue directly. You think so? Uh, open, open your, open your mail. Yeah, uh, and I so need is it this one.
sorry, there is a, a, a little management from Hello. Okay. Okay. I think it is okay. And for the presentation. Uh, okay. I can I can't see the question. Uh, <laughs> okay. So uh, we we will try to check the questions um, after. after after when we finish the the two parts. We are really sorry for this. Uh, okay. Okay, so um, thank you, Francois, for, for everything um, and uh, for the presentation of like uh, the ex ante control. Uh, now we are like, going through the part two, uh, which in fact uh, will not uh, be like a, a new explanation of like the uh, ex ante control, but uh, just like a kind of like little forecast of uh, uh, what we will check uh, during the next FLC, just like uh, control, the two others. Uh, and especially regarding the, like, the eligibility of expenditures. So it's just like um, for you to know exactly what uh, we will focus on uh, regarding just like uh, all the all the evidences, all the all the different uh, kind of like uh, proofs, proofs of like um, proofs of like uh, uh, payments and like uh, expenditures. Uh, so you can just like because you are just like starting the project right now, just like we'll be able just like to collect everything and just like not be taking back uh, any kind of surprises when we will be uh, reviewing just like your your financial and uh, administrative statements like a little bit later uh, maybe like in uh, one year uh, for like the 70 percent like uh, expenditure like step and uh, for the final uh, financial statement uh, of course, uh, this part is focused on uh, the expenditures, which is a part of like the control we have like to uh, conduct. But it's only a part of. Of course, it's like the more technical part. So that's why well, we will go like through it like um, very like uh, in depth. But uh, I must emphasize that like they are like the. One of the parts which is like very important is just like the administrative part, which in fact is the reporting of what you've done uh, so far. Uh, let's say like for the 70% like a report, like a kind of like the middle report you have like to submit. Uh, and we will, um, we will like um, put into perspective the course regarding just like what you've done so far uh, as a project. So of course there must be cost, but the cost must be like related of like uh, something you've done, like uh, uh, tangible uh, actions uh, that must have been occurred like uh, for your project. As I don't know if it's clear enough for you. Um, and also, uh, as Francois said before, and uh, I must emphasize that one again is everything like related to publicity, because you know. Publicity, like uh, usually, sounds like something like very just okay. Of course, we've done it, and and something like uh, not very important. But it is because if it can't really just like um, uh, prevent you from receiving the funds at the end, uh, you really have like to if if it's not done properly, you will have like to to do like a, a lot of like. Uh, uh, action just like to be ensure that the publicity 
uh, that you, you, have, you have not done like uh, on the first uh, on the on the first steps of the project, uh, you will have to do it like uh, like uh, meanwhile and or at the end. And so it's like a, a lot of like a bosomness. You don't want you don't want like to and if it retard, of course the payment. So you don't really want like to to go to go through that kind of like a, uh, issues. Um, so regarding the main principles, uh, uh, of course maybe it could be like a little bit like of redundancy uh, uh, regarding like what like Francois goes through before, but. Uh, of course, you 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 must have like a sound financial management. So, which means we, as like controllers, we will have like to be like to be sure and just like to 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 be able to uh, identify very quickly uh, what kind of payment you've done and what. <laughs> um, how this payment, these expenditures, is related to uh, the project. So the connection between the, the, the expenditures and the payments of these expenditures and the project must be very clear, like crystal clear. So you, you, you have like to, to be sure that uh, the relationship between like the project and the cost, the expenditures, is very strong. Uh, if it's not very clear, we will have like, to ask you like more details, and uh, you in which will like retard our work and the payments. So be sure that uh, everything is uh, is done properly. Uh, be sure that uh, it will be like very uh, clear also uh, that the payment of this expenditure you have presented like in the financial report. Uh, is paid and that like uh, we can have like the proof of payments uh, like very easily uh, and uh, of course be identified very feasible, plausible and in champions that's that's uh, exactly what I've uh, said before um, that the cost is efficient economic uh, and like uh, efficient so that the expenditures uh, has been like uh, down like uh, in order just like to achieve one very uh, uh, achievable service project and that is not like uh, and it's it's a very uh, uh, can i say that uh, very just like uh, yeah but efficient that in fact the expenditures just like uh, uh, um, it's kind of difficult, but um, is uh, is not like uh, it's mandatory exactly. That's what I want to mean. That the, the, this, the expenditure you present is mandatory in uh, in order just like to achieve the project. So if it's something like uh, who, uh, could have been avoided uh, or something like an extra like expenditures we will not like retain it okay and uh, we have like to also keep in mind that um, these expenditures is not something like extravagant so something like this like a, like ec economically sound you know uh, and of course effective uh, also we will just like uh, focus um, like regarding this like uh, expenditures like uh, um, with like this principle of like proportionality, so this like expenditure must uh, be uh, proportionate like to the size uh, of the project, and uh, so of course like a very uh, costly uh, expenditures like regarding like everything else uh, will be like rejected. So as as I said before, the compliance like with the EU national uh, and uh, of course like uh, UIA rules uh, must be we must prevail of course uh, and of course that's the strictest rules that will prevail. 
So either the national, the EU, of like uh, the UIA rules. Um, so some points of vigilance, uh, vigilance. Sorry. Uh, of course, like expenses that could be like a, that could have been like invoiced uh, between like two partners. Uh, so double financing means like uh, if this expense could be like already have been financed by another source of financement, uh, especially if it's like a EU uh, EU like um, uh, financement. Uh, for like organizations that could be like financed by like uh, other uh, EU funds. Um, if the project could like involve some kind of like revenues uh, that could be like uh, generated by uh, this project uh, especially. So for instance, maybe you know already that your project will uh, um, incur some like revenues, generating like revenues. So it's already uh, somewhere in uh, the budget you have submitted uh, in your project. But that can, of course, also um, be revenues that will be generated and that have hasn't been like forecasted, uh, planned. So like during the life of the project, maybe you will just like uh, organize some events or some anything that could like generate generated like revenues, and this revenue will will should have been should be like um, uh, stated just like in your financial reports. Uh, uh, also, everything like relating like to the public procurement procedures and in kind contributions. Uh, but we will go through all that like uh, later on, like in the next slides. So we will go through like uh, every main budget lines uh, and uh, see uh, together what kind of like um, piece of like uh, uh, what kind of like proof we will just like go through and ask you uh, uh, and like uh, go go through um, the different risks that can occur for like the specific budget lines. So regarding the staff costs, so basically the staff cost uh, means like the, the cost that, uh, that are related like to the staff will be like involved like specifically for this project. That means like the staff we will just like be part of the project, but not not will be like specifically involved in the project. Will be like in the overhead cost. Uh, that is a, a second budget line. So staff cost is the gross employment cost of person employed directly by the partner or MUA organization and working full of part time on the project. So calculation principles are very simple. Uh, it's based on cost actually paid by the partner or the MUA. Uh, this cost is uh, calculated like individually by per staff member. Uh, and uh, that um, the, the each staff member must be like assigned like uh, by a written assignment by the employer just like to the uh, project okay so mainly the employer must like for each and each employee must draft like a specific uh, task assign assignment and uh, assign this employee specifically to the project, part-time or full-time, okay? Uh, if it's like 100% uh, of time, of course, we will just like take into account like the, the whole just like cost. And if it's like a part-time, we will just like take a percentage, like the retained percentage of time uh, work on the project by this employee. Uh, there are some ineligible costs, as you may know. So, of course, like the unpaid voluntary work, uh, 
uh, which he lack are ineligible. Uh, the voluntary payments uh, and uh, non-officially assigned employees related cost. Okay, like uh, especially per diem, extra salary cost uh, that we will not support. Uh, that's all. Uh, well, of course, like dividends. Uh, and uh, overheads, but because overheads will be like uh, in the next budget lines and will be like a flat weight as we uh, as we will just like uh, see a little bit later. Um, so concerning like audit trail, uh, we will have like to go through uh, uh, like uh, every just like uh, global yearly just like a uh, report of uh, salary uh, wages sheet, uh, salary wages sheet, okay, and um, and go through the validation of the total hours day work period by this, according like, to the local uh, rules, uh, of course, and according like to the specific of the specificity of the working contract, and then we will just like. Um, uh, we construct like the weight, in fact, uh, that has been assigned just like to this employee uh, on the written assignment. We, we've seen like a little bit uh, uh, before. Uh, so, in, in fact, basically, we have like to be sure that the weight of time work on the project by this, by this employee or like the, the employees, like uh, in a overall, uh, are just like the good ones. Okay. Because, of course, it determines just like the amount uh, of cost uh, we will be like uh, able just like to take into account for this specific budget line. Okay. Um, so, uh, then after we will go through the every time sheets that are validated by the project manager, okay, and the person involved. So be sure just like to keep like a, a very just like a exact like track time record like uh, of like uh, every single just like uh, time like uh, every person every employee just like who are listed just like in this for this like staff cost uh, and be able just like to product them uh, if needed of course. Uh, and also the proof of payments uh, globally, just like um, for every employee. So usually it's like bank statement because it's like wire transfers. Um, and we will just ask for like some uh, of the of the payments, just like in order to be sure that the payments will be uh, 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 has been done like properly. Okay. So, but. Of course, we will not uh, only just like um, focus on like uh, uh, how many time uh, has been spent by this employee or by employees, and uh, if like the wages uh, has been paid like, properly, but we will also like uh, will go through uh, the effectiveness of the work that has been done by those employees. Means like. Uh, there will be like uh, we will ask for like uh, any uh, proof on like what has been done by this employee or employees regarding the project. Okay, so which means in fact uh, supporting papers like uh, studies, memos, emails, uh, meeting uh, uh, notes, or. Anything that can be like relevant, like and uh, accepted, like as proofs for this uh, specific uh, staff cost audit trail. Okay, and of course uh, um, we will just like see and uh, if like uh, these costs and uh, employees like reports uh, are have been like properly forecasted by the initial budget. 
So of course, like um, this budget, like you've like submitted, like uh, when you have like submitted like uh, the your like, global submission, uh, is a f- some forecast budget. And of course, this um, uh, this budget will uh, certainly uh, adapt, adjust, like uh, over like the life of the project. So maybe some people uh, that like uh, are focused like to uh, to to be like uh, uh, employed or listed on the staff cost uh, on the forecast project. This this list maybe will change and adapt a little bit. But uh, you have like to report every change and be able like to explain why. Um, why is this? Uh, why is every just like movement uh, that can be like occur like during like this uh, like project life, uh, like to the mainly like to the if you are partner to the MUA and uh, then the MUA just like to the UIA and, and um, all every just like um, adjustment. Uh, sh- like major adjustment, of course, if it's like on the verge, there is no like um, need to do that. But every like major like changes uh, must be like approved, okay. And if not, uh, the new expenditures will not be like taken into account, okay. So what could be like the risk that uh, we can just like face uh, when we will just like conduct like uh, our first like um, FLC controls like uh, uh, something like uh, in the middle of like 2018 or let's say 2018. Uh, it's uh, of course absence of like any working contract for the people who are just like listed of this like staff cost budget lines. Um, the lack of precision of like uh, the tasks that are expected uh, in the written assignments for like each employee, um, any exclusion of like social charges, uh, every non-improved timesheets, um, every task that we will just like after, of course, uh, having asked you like uh, some explanation um, any tasks like uh, that are reported in the timesheets which are not consistent regarding like objectives of the project uh, or of course like uh, uncover like staff costs so in any case uh, and that's a, like general just like a, a remark like concerning like uh, uh, so, we, so, so the question we will, we will uh, have like uh, doing like this FLC like uh, uh, control period. Of course, uh, there will be like um, a contract uh, um, a period after like the report when we will just like ask you uh, just like to justify yourself uh, and justify um, every just like findings uh, we could have been like uh, able just like to uh, find uh, so of course if you not like agree with the findings and like uh, or any just like a uh, cost we will not um, we just like uh, not we will not take into account for uh, for like the financial report you will be able just like to like submit us just like your remarks and like new uh, evidences or just like uh, and we will just like go through everything and just like decide uh, regarding like this new just like um, like uh, explanation if we will just like retain it or not retain it at the end so just like a, like a global remark um, so regarding like uh, so what we can just like uh, uh, name it like office and administration or call it like overhead costs uh, it's something uh, that's a very like a strict like a very straightforward like a control because it's a flat weight okay so what is overhead overhead is uh, all the expenditures um, operating and administrative expenses okay of 
anyway or partners, like office rent, utilities, like office supplies, like uh, accounting uh, uh, fees, uh, uh, archives, uh, uh, costs, like uh, all the maintenance, uh, repair and cleaning, security, IT system, communication, any bank charges, which are not specifically uh, charged for like, uh, this project. Because if some bank charges are like specifically charged because of the like incurred like because of this project, so it's not uh, an overhead, but it's like a, another line of expenditures. Okay, and this flat rate is like fifteen uh, percent. Okay, uh, of reported staff cost, which means that it's very important that like like the staff cost. Uh, you will report will be like of course like retained uh, globally and uh, there will not be like uh, any uh, expenses that will at the end not been like retained by uh, uh, the UIA because of course it will affect your overhead because it's directly related all right so of, for this budget line we don't really have like to do nothing we will not need like any the pieces and documents because it's a flight rate but be sure just like to document like uh, very well like the staff cost uh, budget line okay uh, so of course because of it's a flat because it's a flat rate there will not be like any audit trail ask at this uh, for this like a budget line um, so what are the risks uh, for this uh, office administration? Uh, so, of course, uh, it's like a, a non-listed cost for the project. Uh, if the global amounts do not match uh, with the financial statement line general, general ledger accounts, uh, Allocation key for the project is not explained. Uh, overheads are not consistent. And uh, confusion between direct and indirect overheads. Uh, and uncovered office administration, administration cost. In fact, the main risk is, is just like for you, just like um, to be able just like to, to distinguish very clearly uh, what is what is related like to direct cost, like direct project cost, and what is overhead? Okay, um, because if you just like um, uh, just like confuse like overhead cost and direct cost, you will not be like reimbursed of this cost. Okay, above like the fifteen percent of like uh, this flat rate based on like partner staff cost. Okay, so for you, um, as the MUA or partners, you really have that, that you really have like to distinguish what is like overhead and what is like directly like uh, related like to the direct cost. Okay, so but you may just like ask any just like question you want uh, to us like uh, right now or like during like the next week or when we will, will be like on spot. And maybe uh, we will just like uh, uh, answer you like directly, or maybe we will just like have like to uh, report just like uh, to the UIA and just like uh, and make you make you like uh, written like answer, so um, you will not have any surprise at the end. Um, I see that uh, uh, you have like uh, already just like ask questions, and uh, we will go through like uh, maybe like some of the questions, but like, at the end of the part two, okay? Uh, concerning like uh, travel and accommodation budget line. So, uh, travel and accommodation, uh, it's very simple. 
uh, it's every single cost uh, you you as a partner or anyway um, um, uh, that uh, every cost that will uh, that uh, will be like a, a result of like the, the project uh, your project involvement so it could be like of course uh, every travels you will have like to do uh, in order like to participate like to uh, any OIA meetings or uh, OIA just like uh, events that you will be like uh, um, asked like to attend uh, it's all the cost uh, like uh, local uh, local travels or like uh, uh, travels that you uh, will just like initiate uh, from your initiative like uh, in your country or maybe like in in Europe maybe just like to meet some other just like uh, um, UIA initiative just like uh, uh, project orders because in order just like to uh, compare your project for instance or uh, maybe to uh, mm, uh, to meet the people in order just like I don't know if like the projects like in a similar just like kind of nature just like um, in order just like to um, to see if you can um, maybe like do something together or like uh, uh, everything that can uh, during the life of your project like enhance or uh, diffuse uh, your best practices like uh, among like all the partners or, or uh, non-partners like uh, among like other people who could be like interested in your project and maybe could apply like uh, to the, the UI initiative like uh, uh, um, uh, granted like a uh, little bit like uh, later on or, so that's all the costs this cost that you can just like report under like this travel and accommodation budget line Okay, and of course uh, you have like to keep uh, uh, like the evidences of like all the travels, meals, and every just like expenditures um, that uh, will be like incurred by like these expenditures. Uh, you have like to document like uh, every single uh, expenditures and like who these like uh, expenditures are related in any kind. Uh, to the project. So, um, okay, so if I go through like the, the PowerPoints, uh, the bullet points, so cost should be in line with the partners, travel and accommodation policy rules. Um, of course, you will be asked kindly uh, and <laughs> Uh, to uh, to go like to to, um, uh, to to choice like the more effectiveness cost efficiency and if possible eco friendliness kind of like expenditures means that in fact if you just like uh, you are like um, asked like to 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 to, uh, to travel like uh, on economic class uh, and uh, for like uh, train lines or like uh, plane uh, plane plane lines, uh, you will be asked just like to choose like the more efficiency like way to travel if it's like train, plane, or cars. But you know like uh, of course like uh, all that all that point already. Public transport, of course, uh, must have your priority if possible. Uh, other private companies, okay? Uh, and as I said before, if uh, you are invited by uh, any way or invited as a partner, if you are invited by like uh, the UIA or invited by uh, other people related like uh, in relation with this project, like to present it or like uh, to, uh, or if even if, you, if it's your like own initiative, just like to invite some people, uh, to review your project, uh, so it could be like uh, uh, eligible. The different points of vigilance is, um, 
uh, everything that includes like travel agency services costs. Okay, so of course it could be like eligible, but, but we will be like uh, very vigilant like uh, that this cost will be not uh, like first of all um, uh, too expensive, and uh, that uh, and that uh, travel agency. Uh, must have been like uh, put like into like um, a, uh, into competition with others uh, as like the other cost of course. Uh, TNA outside of the European Union uh, could be eligible. Could be. It's not. It's not eligible by nature, but we have like to be like very. We will be like very diligent of that. Uh, if they have been included in the approved uh, uh, application. Like application form, like in fact, like the the budget, uh, the forecast budgeted, so the forecast budget, or requested an approved beforehand. Okay, so if we can go like uh, maybe you can go like to uh, uh, like close countries uh, or like uh, pain countries that are like uh, not part of the EU right now, but just like our applicant, for instance. I mean, why not like Turkey or uh, North African countries, for instance, why not? But you have like to ask beforehand uh, like the, the, the opinion of like the UIA uh, for this kind of like uh, expenditures. Uh, unfortunately, uh, all cancellation costs uh, on news tickets are not eligible. Uh, uh, TNA cost for external experts and service providers could be eligible, uh, but not within this budget line and those uh, external expertise and services budget line. So it must be like every, 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 every kind of like a TNA cost for this kind of like experts and service providers must be like included in like in a general just like a, a bill in fact uh, and should be like reported uh, in the um, uh, external expertise budget line. We will go uh, straight further. So what we will uh, need like uh, as for the audit trail is like every documentation according like to the travel and accommodation policy rules. Uh, of the partner and uh, also uh, according just like to, uh, to the national rules. Uh, every kind of like uh, proof of uh, the advance, uh, proof of participation, uh, like uh, for instance like a signed participant list and if every document that uh, could have been like, provided like to participants, boarding passes, uh, even like why not just like uh, photos of the event or videos or you know anything that could be like relevant of course uh, and of course like every kind of like um, document and proof of participation uh, must uh, be uh, like relevant like uh, regarding like the agenda agenda of the event of course if like uh, the dates will not be the same for the like, documents and like uh, travel documents and uh, documents uh, of participation and uh, the uh, dates for this event, of course, if there is uh, like a contradiction with, uh, for, this, for the dates, it will not be like eligible. Uh, paid invoices uh, are daily allowance claims, uh, including proof of reimbursement by the employer to the employee. Uh, what could be the risk? Uh, a person traveling not reporting in the labor cost section. Uh, okay, so if the person is not like a, is not reported like as a staff, uh, maybe maybe uh, as, of course it's not it's not mandatory, huh? uh, but it's a point of vigilance. Uh, the days of travels are not reported in the supported timesheets. Absence of validation of invoice, invoices by the project manager before payment. Uh, car travels are not enough documented. Uh, all the travel is not consistent with the objectives of projects. 
uh, or if like uh, uncovered travels and uh, and accommodation cost uh, uncovered uh, by the budget yeah uncovered by the budget uh, or just like um, will be like uh, I mean means like if the budget lines is like way above what has been like approved uh, on first and and not being just like uh, adjusted like within the time frame of the project so uh, external it's it's kind of like very just like um, we go like very like through like every details uh, um, but I think it's very important like for you just like to know exactly what will we uh, expect for you uh, as MUA and partners because of course like the MUA will just like present like a, a consolidated just like budget uh, consolidated just like financial report of all the expenditures that uh, will be like reported like by the partners so it's very important like for you just like to know exactly what documents we will just like ask you guys uh, and so you will be able just like to collect them beforehand uh, and then we'll be able just like to supply them like uh, even like without us like being obliged just, like, to ask you because it will just like uh, uh, accelerates like every payment process so first of all it will accelerate the payment process it will accelerate like all just like controls and then it will just like minimize um, every kind of like uh, issues regarding the, like these expenditures and then uh, of course um, you will not have any like kind of like surprises every expenditures you will just like uh, ask like for reimbursement will be reimbursed okay so that's all the points about like this like a uh, uh, kind of like a uh, lecture just like a uh, training session is about that okay to avoid like any bad surprises on your side so um, regarding just, just like external expect expectations and services um of course is all the fees um of like the partners uh you will solicitate uh within the frame of the project so basically is like uh, every people every specific uh skills uh you don't have like in house and you need just like to pursue just like to achieve the project could be like uh, you know lawyers uh, could be engineers uh, could be anything uh, on this kind um, and these uh, professional services and expertise um, uh, must be of course linked to the project okay and uh, be documented and um, must be of course the subject of like um, some uh, competition and you have like to ask like uh, for each expenditures like uh, uh, different like uh, uh, project cost different kind of like uh, proposals uh, in order just like to review them and just like to choose like the best proposal just like uh, financially and uh, regarding just the quality of like the the, 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 the service that will be conducted of course um, so this this external expertise of course must be like uh, carry on by providers which are outside the partnership so it's not it's it's this kind of like uh, external expertise and service budget line will not concern any uh, services we will be carried on by like partners okay so partners is partner a partner is not just like a, an external expert 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 okay um, the service of course uh, must be like uh, directly like connected by the project and necessary okay so kind of like mandatory okay so it must be like a, of course document like written contracts or equivalent documents uh, and we will be like uh, vigilant uh, 
of course, that was the former, just like a slide, uh, of like TNA costs. Okay, TNA cost must be like included like in the invoices of the service provider and not being like reported like in the TNA budget line. Okay, TNA budget line are only for like the like uh, staff and like uh, or guests uh, of the events that uh, you, you can like throw. Um, uh, all the promotional giveaways uh, must be like uh, under like 50 like euro like uh, per item uh, and of course like uh, uh, the promotional giveaways must be like uh, really like give like <laughs> to people and like related just like to an event or like uh, and must of course um, uh, have like the, all the publicity like concerning like the European uh, Union funding on it. Um, the scheme is like uh, supporting like the distribution of like financial contribution uh, for like instant like uh, vouchers. Uh, must be like uh, also like uh, a point of vision. Uh, as I said before, uh, all external expertise and services must, of course, uh, must be like in compliance with like the procurement rules. Uh, as I said before, so contracts between like uh, partners are ineligible, and uh, all the costs like related like to the UIA experts and auditors. Uh, are not uh, to be like reported, of course, in this budget lines because these costs are obviously just like covered by the UAE. Okay, uh, that but that means that, of course, um, this kind of cost, if you need like any assistance uh, for like by local, just like uh, service providers, like just like to in order that like, for you, just like to. Um, to be like, like uh, in compliance with like all the EU, EU rules on your part could be like uh, of course an external expertise you can you could just like report on this budget line, okay? But it must be like only on your side, and it's not like the auditor and expert cost like us for instance that are covered by like the UIA as like uh, for instance like a FLC first level of control or second level of controls. Okay, um, so regarding like the audit trail, and it's like uh, already like 11 p.m. Uh, so I will maybe like um, uh, tell me more quick uh, on my explanation, but it's kind of technical, so uh, it's take time. So evidence of the procurement process, of course, in line with applicable U UIA national and international procurement rules, written contracts. Uh, of course, any changes to the contract must comply with the procurement rules and must be like suffi sufficiently like documented. <coughs> Invoices uh, uh, and proof of payments, proof of like outputs or service delivered. Uh, in fact, everything from like the beginning of uh, the, I don't know, like the, um, the elaboration, just like all the specification of the needs, in fact, what I, everything from like the start of the start, so what, which is in fact like what we need to the end of this like uh, external expertise, just like um, uh, service, uh, must be documented, okay? Uh, so uh, quickly, what, has, what could be the risk? Uh, of course, providers could be already part of the partnership, or okay, like or like strongly like related to any partner, okay, as a, as an entity, or as a, like as, as a person. Huh? So if we just discover that the providers are like in any way like uh, strongly connected like to the, any entity, it could be like MY or partners or like physical person involved in those kind of entities, of course, it could be a problem. Um, undeclared provisions, uh, absence of competition between providers, but of course, um, that is like related like to all the procurement, public procurement like a kind of process. Existence of conflict of interest, that's exactly uh, what I said before. 
uh, and it's like the separation and reimbursement like of like TNA. We've gone through that before. Uh, if like the fees as like clearly like overestimate, overestimated, like rewarding just like a, you know like a global uh, fees like uh, that can be like uh, observed like uh, elsewhere like in the country or like uh, in Europe. Um, everything. Uh, uh, regarding like uh, contracting consulting services, uh, non-deduction of, of like recoverable VAT if like uh, you or your partners are or not like uh, eligible, uh, uncovered of like external expertise and services costs. Uh, <laughs> equipment now, <laughs> budget line. So what is equipment? It's basically all what you do need in order just like to uh, uh, achieve the project as you have like uh, designed and submitted it and as it has been approved uh, by the UIA. By equipment, we mean just like significant equipment because otherwise it's kind of like, uh, it could be like, a, it's overhead, basically. If it's just like, a, it's a staples or if it is just like, uh, you know, like uh, sheets of papers or like uh, pens or whatever, that's overhead. That's not equipment. Okay? Equipment basically is what, um, what you will report uh, in your just like uh, national, like uh, uh, financial uh, uh, statements uh, as a... Uh, um, as investments, okay? Equipment is investment. So it depends of like your national rules, uh, accounting rules, uh, because some, uh, for like some uh, countries, it can start like from like a very low amount of like uh, money. In some other countries, it just like starts like uh, at, uh, I don't know, 500 or whatever depends on the countries, uh, but basically equipment is an investment, okay? So it could be like um, office equipment, of course, could be like uh, computers, because computers are like expensive, uh, could be like uh, IT, hardware and software, uh, could be uh, pieces of furniture, okay? Pieces of furniture that uh, are just like um, mandatory cost uh, in order just like to achieve the project, Okay, for instance, I don't know, if you just like uh, hire just like a specific uh, person just like to over overview the project or just like uh, to conduct the project, uh, he needs this, this guy will need just like uh, a new computer uh, and will need just like a desk and a chair. Uh, so those kind of like uh, expenditures are direct cost and uh, should be like reported just like as equipment, okay? Uh, okay, it could be like uh, laboratory equipment, why not? Um, could be any mach ma machine, or like instruments, tools or devices, okay, anything you can think about that could be like reported just like in this equipment, like budget line. So, I said before, it would be like, a, like, like all those projects, like must be of course like very necessary to this project implementation, uh, or considered like a, as a project output, okay? Uh, in this budget line, you must also include just like um, all the costs of equipment like you already have like in position uh, by you, your partner, or MUA your partner, and use like to carry out like project activities, okay? You can report, of course, the equipment you are using um, in this expenditures line. Uh, regarding the certain just like uh, adjustment, like we will go through like a li little bit like later on. Uh, like for instance, like everything that uh, uh, that could be like regarded like like uh, regarded like like this de depreciation cost, like yeah, fixed assets. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, there is a distinction like that has to be made. Okay, between like uh, the equi 
equipment like necessary for the project implementation on the on the on the pro rata uh, depreciation value basis okay uh, and equipment like uh, considered like, as part of the project invest investment okay so on the first term we will just like uh, only consider it like the depreciation depreciation cost of this uh, particular just like investment okay on the pro rata basis so for instance we are like on a three year uh, project okay so uh, for instance if a computer is just like uh, on regarding a few national rules like uh, uh, accounting rules is maybe like uh, on a five year like a depression basis and uh, this project is is of course uh, on a three year uh, time frame we will just like put like the three of a five uh, 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 like uh, Cost. We are on the three on, over five um, uh, pro rata of the cost of this computer, like investment. No, no, I think you follow me. Uh, and the equipment, like considered as part of the project investment, it's a full purchase price eligible. Okay. Uh, what are the points of vigilance? Uh, of course, uh, always like uh, all the compliance with Pokemon rules. Uh, okay, of course, uh, second-hand equipment, uh, of course, it could be great, just like, uh, why not, uh, just like to uh, acquire, just like, uh, uh, acquire like second-hand equipment, could be like very efficient, and uh, could be also just like a very good thing to do, like uh, regarding like uh, all the ecological uh, aspects of the project. Uh, we are not against that, of course, uh, on the contrary. But um, the main point of vigilance regarding like this kind of like uh, investment uh, will be that uh, that the pod, that the um, for instance the computer like uh, the object uh, subject of this like investment has not been like already been funded by uh, any kind of like AU fund, okay? Like from a, for instance like from from a project or whatever. Okay, so sometimes it's very difficult uh, for us like to assess that kind of stuff, but it will be like a point of vigilance. Uh, any, okay, another point of vigilance is like uh, anything like uh, related like to the site preparation, delivery or installation of the equipment. Okay, it's eligible, but it's a point of vigilance. Okay. Uh, also, anything like regarding like the equipment purchase, like if it's rented or leased for another partner, that is not eligible. Okay. Uh, so concerning audit trail, we will of course like ask you just like to provide uh, anything like uh, related like to the validation of the purchase procedure, uh, correct correct appliance of the tender procedures. Um, insurance of purchase order validated by the project manager. The invoice must correspond like, to the purchase order and also must be validated by the project manager. We will ask you for like a proof of payment, usually bank statement. Uh, explanation uh, of the purpose of like the purchase. So what did you purchase that and, uh, and how just like uh, it is related in any kind like to the project and how it is like mandatory for you just like to make like this investment in order to achieve the per the, 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 the projects that we are like uh, agreed on okay and of course it must be like within like uh, the coverage of the initial or uh, like a newly approved like budget because of course you can at like any time ask uh, the MUA if your partner or UIA just like to review the initial project because of course it can like uh, um, it can just like uh, ask like some like uh, adjustment like within like the, the lifespan of the project. Uh, what what could be the risk? Uh, of course, expenditures could already have like been covered by like the office administration budget line. Uh, absence of any purchase order, non-respect of like the Pokemon rules, conflict of interest between partners. If you just like uh, buy something like uh, 
some person you may know or like uh, who are like in connection with, uh, absence of validation of the invoices. Uh, okay, could also be like uh, could be an like error in the calculated weights uh, when equipment is like partly used for the project or um, regarding just like the depression cost. Uh, of course, if the equipment is not relevant, consistent with the objectives of the project, anything uh, like that. Okay, uh, now a <laughs> new budget line, infrastructures, infrastructures and construction, construction work, sorry. So, uh, what kind of like expenditures uh, could it be? Uh, in fact, all the investments that are that are not like relevant, like uh, or are not into the scope of like the other budget lines. Okay, uh, including uh, everything like uh, regarding like the purchase uh, of any piece of land, real estate, uh, site preparation. Uh, no delivery, handling, installation, renovation. So basically, all what is not covered by like the formal budget line. Uh, so depends of your projects. You may have like uh, uh, this kind of like uh, budget line in your project, uh, but you may not, depending of like uh, of course the project. So. Of course, these uh, expenditures uh, will be taken into account. Of course, um, uh, these expenditures must be crucial to the achievement of the project output and results. Uh, this kind of like uh, expenditures will be like fully eligible, which means like there will be like no depreciation, depreciation like um, costs that will be like. Uh, made or like uh, uh, pursued like uh, on this kind of like uh, 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 investments uh, but we will be like very vigilant uh, with the following points is first of all uh, anything like uh, regarding like again the compliances with the procurement rules uh, anything like regarding like uh, the purchase like in provision of land, so this must not be like over like 10% of the total project budget. And of course, uh, everything that uh, is related like to the ownership uh, of this uh, investment and like uh, durability principles. Okay. Uh, so what will be what kind of documents will be needed for the audit trail? Uh, everything like uh, related like to the validation of the purchase procedure, uh, invoices, proof of payment, uh, everything like uh, regarding like the explanation of the purpose of the purchase. But usually, this kind of like uh, purchases like investments um, are already just like agreed like uh, agreed on like uh, within like uh, the, the the submission you have like submitted like to the UIA because usually it's a kind of like core aspect of your project so it, of course this like need uh, could occur like you, you must discover that we need that kind of like a uh, to to um, like explain it or to be done like within the frame of your project, but it's like very uh, well. Usually, uh, you already know exactly uh, what kind of th that this kind of investment has to be made like beforehand, and this kind of like um, uh, investment has already been improved uh, because uh, it's kind of like uh, a core part of your project. Uh, what could be the risk? Uh, Okay, like uh, for instance, like absence of ownership and control clause regarding like the, the purchase assets. Uh, the investment are, is not included like uh, in, the, in the, the forecasted like budget budget of the project uh, and has not been like approved uh, later on if like really needed. 
Uh, depression costs are not properly calculated. Um, absence of like reconciliation between fixed assets and balance sheets. Uh, uh, completion delay not properly anticipated. Absence of like insurance policy, uh, disrespect of procurement rules. Uh, and uh, of course, if like the infrastructure of construction costs are not cons like uh, or like investment are not like consistent with the objectives of the project. So I think we can. So the revenues. So I think that uh, for the for the main part, you as a partner or MUA, you are already aware and uh, that your project will or will not like generate like revenues. And of course, like uh, you, these revenues has already already like been like forecasted and included just like uh, in your uh, forecast, forecast budget that has been like submitted like uh, in your global submission. But uh, in the like within the lifespan of the project, maybe you can just like throw like some kind of like events like uh, and that could just like generated like revenues. Um, it could be like uh, very even like very little revenues like uh, from like uh, any kind of like um, uh, any kind of like revenues, like uh, I don't know, like uh, tickets for like uh, any events, or if you want like to sell anything like within the the frame of, of an event like uh, related to this project, whatever, it's revenues, and then you will have to declare like any any kind of like revenues in like the different like uh, uh, financial statement you you will have like to submit like to the UIA like during the during the life of the project. So revenues is very really, like easy like uh, for everyone to understand. It's like uh, it's cash uh, inflows directly paid by users or guests or whatever for goods or services provided by a project. Okay, so that includes just like the use uh, of investment and uh, infrastructure uh, subject to charges borne directly by users. Uh, so user fees, uh, compensation for use, uh, wains, whatever. Uh, sales price or rent or, or, or loan or, or land buildings uh, that are like uh, considered like uh, as investments, like uh, as we have seen before. Uh, provision of services against payments. Uh, so every kind of like uh, cash inflows must be reported and declared, okay? And this, all these cash inflows will be like, of course, like, um, uh, be like, uh, will reduce like, uh, like the maximum eligible, eligible expenditures, of course. Uh, 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 and like, will like reduce the participation of like EU to your project. So uh, you will uh, be uh, asked like, to declare any kind of revenues, okay? Uh, I mean by revenues like net revenues, so revenues as defined uh, above less any operating cost and replacement cost of short life equipment incurred during the corresponding period. In, in, fact, in fact, that's net revenues. Uh, so, for instance, if, if, if it's like any kind of like uh, renting revenues, it will be like uh, the renting revenues mi minus like uh, every kind of like uh, charges you, you will just like face for like the building or whatever. So, it's kind of like very simple. Um, uh, so, as I said before, it could be like revenues that... Uh, uh, would have been like forecasted like uh, at the application stage, implementation stage, or after the project. Okay, so you will be like uh, asked just like to uh, report any revenues at any kind of phases uh, of your project. Okay, uh, 
doing a little trail, we, um, we will just like, like, of course, like look at the VAT status, like a sort of a declaration of the estimated net revenues, uh, the declaration of the estimated revenues, like uh, that, expect, that will be like expected like during the period of five years, uh, the action plan for the manager of future revenues, and uh, everything that uh, is connected like to the state aids and de minimis regulations. Okay. Uh, what could be the risk, VAT, uh, the fact that you will not like report any uh, this kind of, any revenues uh, or mis miscalculated mis uh, diverse of revenues uh, uh, that's kind of like the, another aspect of like not reporting it. It means like you will report it like but only partly. Uh, if you will disrespect any kind of like state heads and minimis regulation, uh, that's all basically. So now it's not like any kind of like budget lines anymore, but just like a little bit like a focus of like public documents. We will like go through it like very shortly uh, because you know like everything like already. Um, in fact, uh, what what we can like go through, like uh, maybe like a little bit in detail, is this in-house. Yes, uh, in-house contracting. Um, if you look uh, already just like uh, aware uh, of like any kind of like public uh, procurement rules. Um, you could be able just like to um, to contract uh, with another entity uh, that uh, you control or that is state controlled uh, without any uh, public document, just like any tender uh, procedure. Okay, um, but. I think uh, you are for so for the, the people MUA or just like partners who could be um, uh, concerned by this in-house kind of like contracts that those people uh, should be like aware that they are concerned and maybe you could ask like question uh, um, beforehand and uh, in order for us just like to review if you could or couldn't uh, be like. Um, considered uh, as like in-house uh, contract uh, and so like exempted of like any kind of like tender uh, process stuff. Uh, it's kind of like very specific and it has been like uh, observed like very carefully and uh, individually for uh, like each case. Um, and the last point may be uh, controlled by FLC at partner level. Uh, of course, uh, if we can just, we have not, not proof that you, you, um, you are not like compliant with any procurement rules at any kind of like uh, level of the process uh, of the of the procurement rules. Uh, we can, we will just like reject like the uh, uh, expenditure. Okay, so that's very like basic. Okay, so it's like uh, yes or no, and you have like uh, to be compliant with the procurement rules at every phase of the tender process. You know, from the very beginning to the end. Uh, yeah, uh, if errors are detected, financial corrections will be applied, uh, and it could be like uh, from. Uh, like very like a small amount, small percentage to like the full percentage of it. So really, just like uh, be very careful uh, con uh, concerning like this public procurement rules. Okay. Uh, what could be uh, the most common errors? Just like you can make considering like uh, these public procurements. Um, uh, at the design stage, uh, imprecise definition of the subjects of the contract, uh, use of uh, discriminatory of, or dissuasive criteria, 
uh, especially regarding like uh, EU uh, competition rules, uh, unlawful splitting of contracts. Uh, I mean, like especially like regarding like uh, the 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 different like uh, amounts uh, of money, just like of the contracts, uh, because uh, it's like uh, and publicity. Uh, so th that is also related like to the last point, like wrong procedure, because if you split uh, the contract into very small contracts uh, and just like apply like a wrong procedure, like uh, especially like a uh, wedding, like a uh, like, uh, publicity rules, uh, then uh, it will be like rejected. Uh, and the publicity, uh, the procedure like uh, uh, is related like to the publication stage. Publication of and pub, of publicity. So, if you split it, you maybe uh, you will have like you you will you will uh, um, you will make like an insufficient, insufficient publicity of the tender uh, and or uh, like uh, set like excessive short deadlines because for each kind of like procedure you have like publication rules and deadline rules. Uh, so it will be like, be like a, a motive like for like a widget. Uh, evolution stage, uh, of, of course, you, you cannot like modify the criteria uh, of like evaluation like uh, uh, during the evolution of projects, of like a submission, excuse me. Uh, yeah, you, 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 you have like to comply with like every kind of like uh, a procedure like regarding like the negotiation like uh, uh, negotiation stage like uh, within like the procedure and for the implement stage uh, you have to be aware uh, of the purchase of like additional elements beyond the border of contract and also beyond in fact like the admit, admitted just like uh, uh, EU, EU and um, national rules uh, for like public procurements because sometimes you can just like purchase uh, some additional elements but but within just like a like a reasonable just like percentage of it, of it. So but you, you must know that and, and if you may see if you don't know uh, please like uh, look after that like very carefully. So some uh, some people uh, some uh, are just like uh, are willing just like to to present some like in kind contributions so as like expenditures and um, and contributions uh, so it's possible uh, of course uh, but of we it's like kind of oh, it's it's very specific, like another time, this kind of like income contributions. So please uh, just like uh, ask uh, questions uh, specifically about that. Uh, what is an income contribution, of course? Uh, in, it's a contribution with, with no cash payment is supported by invoices or documents, okay? Or equivalent probative value. Uh, for instance, um, if like um, something, so someone is just like um, uh, a staff, for instance, uh, uh, are just like uh, involved in the project, but are not like uh, financially just like supported by you, uh, but are supported by like another entity. Uh, okay, uh, or for instance, if uh, uh, someone is just just like. Um, you just like giving you like the use of like a space uh, without like uh, without uh, making you like pay for that. Uh, this, this is this kind of like uh, in kind expenditures and contributions uh, that you could just like value in your project. Okay, um, but uh, there is like some specific conditions that uh, must like be uh, need. Uh, the public support paid to the project, um, which includes like income contribution, does not exceed the total el eligible expenditures. Okay, at the end of the project, the value of contribution must be in line with the current open market value. Uh, 
of course you can look like a value something like uh, which is like way above like the open market value for like uh, for instance like a, um, uh, a public space that is like uh, given to you um, the value of the contribution must be certified by an independent qualified expert or like duly otherwise official public body uh, contributions can be deemed eligible insofar as it was not previously paid for or confidenced by EU funds. So, for instance, if the space has already been just like funded by like another EADF fund, like uh, before, uh, for instance, it's, it's not possible. Uh, Unkind contribution under staff course budget line is not eligible. Okay, unpaid voluntary work. Uh, Audit trail, uh, so of course this kind of like income contribution uh, must be must have been declared uh, of like as like an expenditures, of course, because it's at the same time an expenditures and a contribution. Uh, there must be like a written agreement. Uh, so it could be also uh, could also just like provide any declaration statement uh, regarding like transfer of ownership, if any, or certification of the value of uh, the in-kind contributions you want like to value. Uh, so the risk, of course, like the in-kind contribution and mention. Uh, uh, public support exceeds like the total eligible expenditures. Absence of written agreement, disconnection uh, uh, um, regarding the value uh, of like uh, the in-kind contribution you are valuing and open, open market values. Uh, in-kind contribution are not mentioned in the financial report uh, or not fairly estimated, which in fact is the same. Oh, that's the last uh, slide. <laughs> uh, so very quickly, uh, what are like uh, ineligible expenditures? Uh, of course, VAT, if it's not like support by the project partner, uh, any kind of like interest, uh, in any kind of like exchange rate losses, but uh, I think it's on the verge, um, any kind of like Banking charges, fines, financial penalties, expenditures on legal disputes, litigation, unpaid voluntary work, any cost um, incurred before the project start and after the project end date, um, communication materials that is not in line with the UAE rules and communication, which means like basically uh, without any uh, kind of like a logo or like uh, any 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 kind of like uh, any EU funding hint. Uh, of course, a gift like uh, with a reserve of 50 euro, which we've been through before. Tips, of course. Um, any kind of fees between partners. Uh, cost related like to the contacting of employees of the partner organization as external experts, as we have uh, gone through before. Uh, that's basically uh, the main point, but it's a non-exhaustive list. Okay, thank you, Charles. Francois speaking. <clears throat> Charles, thank you so much for all these details. I know it was, you are a little tired, but uh, I hope our, our participants uh, could have through these uh, ex eligibility expenditures principles and uh, illustrations uh, could have already some uh, some uh, some precisions and some and some answers uh, to their questions. Um, we we saw we uh, we had a little problem at the beginning of of of, of the of the online session, but we 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 can now catch up with your questions. There are, there are around ten questions right now. Uh, so we uh, we are looking after after them right now, and we will try to answer directly to some of them. Uh, maybe to finish, and before before answering your, your some of your questions, to f to finish, uh, I, I I will take two minutes to uh, to remind you 
or to to to, to give you uh, what are the UIA major expectations and major uh, I would say uh, major information they want to give you regarding your projects and regarding the risk they can already maybe uh, pre-identify or the difficulties they know that you will face surely during the, the preparation or the, the implementation of your projects. So, of course, it's not, it's not an exhaustive list that I uh, will show you. There are four or five points, but there are, there are really either difficult points or the very, very often points that, uh, and difficulties that we can observe uh, in this kind of complex partnership projects like you have to, to, to manage and to handle. So UIA uh, initiative uh, wants to focus and to, to wants that you pay very special attention. Uh, you all project partners. It means, and I, re I already answered maybe one of the questions, it means of course at the MUA level and at the local partners level. Uh, all what we all what we, we say right now is uh, is applicable uh, for the MUA, but also for the local partners. So uh, all the project partners must pay very special attention to the, the life cycle of their project, I would say. And especially, they, would, they should pay special attention and they should communicate and they should anticipate and they should ad adjust their, uh, their, their, their project uh, budget and, uh, and, uh, and description uh, uh, if there are some modifications or derogations uh, brought to the general principle of project governance as it was defined at, at, uh, initially uh, at the beginning of, of, of your of your of your uh, preparation for example it can be a, a switch uh, of a project manager uh, within the, within the, the 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 team the, the MUA team for example but it can be also a switch of project manager within the local partner team, so it's important that uh, UIA and all your, all your documents are, are adjusted, are updated with this kind of switch so that we can easily verify uh, that uh, this switch is, uh, doesn't present any risk, operational risk and legal risk. There are the two kinds of risk uh, because this kind of modi modifications and derogations to the project governance are very often risk uh, that can uh, that can provoke difficulties uh, in in the implementation, the operational implementation and governance of the project, and of course there can be risk regarding the legal risk responsibility uh, of, of 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 the governance. So please uh, pay very very carefully attention to to, to this point. It can happen in a, in a project uh, if if the project was well defined uh, from the beginning. It shouldn't happen, but sometimes in a project, this kind of modifications and derogations can can emerge. So please uh, be aware uh, that uh, you can you can ask questions beforehand. You can you can you can anticipate. You can uh, and you can communicate on this kind of modifications to be sure that you are compliant with the, the UIA guidelines. And of course, there is also another illustration. For example, you, there can be a, 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 a MUA that should at first have, the, of course, the legal responsibility, the financial responsibility, but also the the, 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 the operational project management responsibility. But in some in some case, it can happen. Uh, we we check on the spot uh, that the, the, the operational project management position and responsibility uh, has been delegated to, uh, to, to, uh, to 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 one of, of of the local partners. So this kind of modifications must be of course written, must be accepted, and must be uh, very very clear for 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 every uh, every stakeholders. The second point uh, for which you, we invite you to pay special attention to is, of course, we said it all along through uh, the eligibility of expenditures part. Uh, it concerns, uh, of course, all the equipment acqu acquisitions, uh, all the investments uh, regarding uh, construction and works. Uh, so. 
please every time you have uh, you have uh, like investments or, 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 or purchasing or purchasing procedures uh, verify and check that you are compliant with uh, the tri the strictest regulation applicable it can be your national regulation or the EU regulation so you, and, and at first and we will check it on the exempty control you need to show us what kind of procedures, procurement procedures, procurement rules you follow and you apply. Uh, it is, it is the, first, the first thing that we will check. Uh, if you have this kind of procedures, written procedures, it shouldn't be only oral and only informal. It should be written and applied. So please uh, be careful of, of this compliance. Another compliance that is very important and Charles said at the beginning of his intervention, uh, it can it can be uh, a little stupid that at the end of the project uh, you, you try you try to, to, to come up with this uh, compliance with publicity and communication requirements. Uh, it is very important for of course for 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 uh, European Commission and for 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 the interested entity uh, the UIA that you respect from the beginning. Uh, the rules regarding publicity and communication uh, when 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 funds of uh, of uh, ERDF and EU are, are involved in your projects. Uh, at last, but not least, this time uh, uh, another point is uh, it's maybe more technical point, and I'm sh I'm sure when we will be on the spot with you, uh, we may have questions, very technical questions. So technical verifications uh, uh, regarding depreciation rules. So uh, as uh, Charles uh, explained to you, uh, it is almost regarding uh, to uh, equipments uh, and only equipment. So investment uh, basically. And so the, we will check the pro rata uh, how you apply a pro rata depre depreciation uh, cost on on your assets on your fixed assets. Or uh, if there is not a prorata, if you if you if you if you really app, uh, uh, do application of of the depreciation uh, regular rules. And again, this time again for this for this last point, uh, before we check really uh, the prorata and so on, the calculation you made uh, about depreciation rules, please provide us. And, and, and be aware that we will first check if you have available and formalized documentation. So if you have really uh, plenty of equipments, investments, uh, please uh, check if you have uh, already defined and, and written uh, down or if you have a, a standard rule uh, known by all your staff members. Uh, at least the ones who, who purchase and validate uh, uh, this kind of payments uh, of equipment, check that there is a document, a procedure, a written procedure that we can we can rely on and we can we can we can we can uh, check on the spot. So there are major expectations and major uh, I mean uh, warnings also at the same time because there are there are uh, very often uh, uh, problems observed. Uh, in this kind of projects. We arrive in the money time, I would say. We are in the, in the, in the, in, in the money time of our, of our training session. Um, so we arrive at the, at the moment where uh, when we, we, we try to answer your questions. I see that Charles is already uh, working on it. Um, so just before before uh, trying to to, uh, to answer some of your questions, uh, I remind you uh, that there are this uh, FAQ box, email box. So please do not hesitate to write to us. Maybe you did already uh, during the session uh, uh, in this mail in this in this email uh, address, uh, and do not hesitate to to uh, to mention. Uh, who you are, uh, what uh, the city and uh, the project uh, you are managing, so that we can be efficient on the spot to give you answers. Um, I remind you also that there will be a record uh, at your disposal of the session, of the training session, uh, and of course, uh, Charles and I 
uh, we, uh, we, are, we are expecting and looking forward to seeing you on the spot uh, at the first day uh, and uh, basically at the opening meeting we will organize with you and all your partners. So before answering your questions, uh, I talk for myself, but also for on behalf of Charles, uh, we would like to, to thank you all uh, for your for your for your participation uh, and uh, your participation and your attendance uh, and your questions also. Uh, thank you also. I don't know if they are still listening to the UIA uh, uh, permanent secretariat that helped us to build this session. And thank you also to the IT, IT department and the communication department of uh, UIA that will manage then the, the, the session record uh, to put uh, this at your disposal. So right now, because Charles could already uh, look, uh, look after your question, I give, the, uh, I, give you, I give you the microphone, Charles, to answer, to answer maybe uh, first or two, two first questions. Um, yes, I already uh, answered like uh, some questions like uh, on the Q and A uh, uh, part like of the of this like Webex. Uh, I will not like go through like every question right now. Uh, so I was like answering like this um, last question like uh, do public procurement like uh, apply also for staff cost? No, of course not. Um, uh, but if you uh, plan just like to um, to ask like some kind of like a temporary just like a staff company uh, to provide you like some help like uh, for any kind of like temporary just like work you have to to to, to be carried on, uh, then it's a service like uh, and it goes like uh, into the budget of like a service uh, expenditures line and. Uh, you will have just like to, um, uh, to, 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 to do all the public uh, Pokemon uh, kind of like uh, process you have to do for that kind of stuff. But for the normal uh, staff, no, of course not. Then I saw Charles, you answered also the first, the first questions uh, regarding the priority checks. So that was the bank account control and the FAT status control. The question was, we, uh, these controls, will they be done uh, only at the MUA level? Uh, Christina, thank you for also for your question. Uh, so Charles answered you, and uh, of course you will be with him. Uh, all, all, generally speaking, all, all the controls, and of course the priority controls mentioned, they will be made on both levels. Uh, we will, of course, check uh, all these kind of uh, principles and rules and uh, risk assessment system uh, and compliance with all the rules, we will check it at the MUA level at first. And of course, we will focus our control at the MUA level first because they are they are responsible for 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 for, for the management of the overall project. But we will also check the same rules and the same principle and the same compliance at every local partner level so there is there is a par I, I, I talked about this uh, er, er, earlier uh, in in the presentation there is a parallelism approach uh, of the control regarding uh, first the MUA then the local partners so that there, there shouldn't be different controls uh, on each level but the same of course, uh, depending the results that we will have on these controls at the MUA level, uh, it will give us an idea of what we can find in the in the local partner level. Because if we are uh, grand certain we have the we are the first level controller, actually we could be the the, the first and half uh, level controller because the first level the first level control. It is, it is an operational control by the MUA, who is responsible for, for the management and the risk assessment system of the overall project. So the first, the first controls actually depends on the MUA. So we will focus fir firstly our controls to the MUA, that's normal, they are responsible for the project, but the same controls will be done uh, following to, the, to, to, the, to each local partner. Um, so Charles, I don't know if you answered already another questions. Uh, yes, 
but I think like every everyone can just like see it like a bank ac- bank accounts uh, VAT. Uh, okay, bank accounts of course it's only like for MUA level because uh, at the end we don't have to check like your partner's bank accounts. Uh, uh, but for the VAT is very different because. Um, it will be like uh, checked for like every partner and every way, of course, uh, because when we will report like your expenditures, we have to know exactly uh, if you support or not uh, the VAT, because if you're not like supporting any VAT, um, you, you will have like to, uh, to report like uh, the expenditure like differently. So it will be like on the partner level. Uh, for the time sheets of the staff, uh, I'm about like, to answer this question right now. Uh, so you were told just like uh, it's not needed. Uh, I mean, uh, we will check it. Uh, uh, yeah, it's 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 needed. Uh, you don't have like, to um, to send like everything like uh, with like every report, but we will ask you. Uh, like within like the FLC uh, control, just like to provide us like, like some of them. Uh, f- for like uh, inviting someone who are not listed, like uh, for like an event or whatever, uh, every kind of like invitation, like uh, events or whatever, uh, are of course like possible. Uh, to throw, but um, be sure just like uh, to ask like uh, if it's not like already just like a uh, plan uh, in your just like a uh, uh, submission you have like to ask like for the specific authorization uh, to the and report like to the UIA for like uh, for them like just look to uh, to approve like uh, this expenditure but uh, I don't think it would be a problem uh, as soon as uh, it is like uh, demonstrated that it is like related like to the project and for the good of the project and, and uh, everything. François? Uh, I, I, I think we, we answered a few questions, maybe four or five. Uh, uh, I think the yeah uh, some of the questions like uh, must uh, be like um, specified a little bit more in order for us like to answer properly and um, and uh, some of the question uh, must be like uh, review like uh, just after the meeting with us and UIA and we will get uh, we will like uh, give you like answers as soon as possible. Okay, and maybe uh, we will come back to you later about this point. But uh, there was maybe uh, now now I'm realizing it uh, in in the training document regarding the, the staff cost uh, expenditures control. Uh, uh, we will need to come back to you to clarify and to give you confirmation if uh, in the documentation you need to, you need to produce. If you uh, you uh, clearly need to uh, to uh, to have uh, timesheets of your of your of your of your staff, uh, so it, it was a point uh, on the verge to to be to, to be clarified and to be uh, to be validated. Uh, so we, we, we have not right now the, the, the final answer answers, but but we will we will give you back uh, through uh, through uh, through an email, I guess, uh, the confirmation if yes or not. Uh, you need you need to keep and to and to give us timesheets. Um, that was this this point I had in mind. Then uh, I see Charles Charles is answering some questions. I, 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 we actually we don't know if everybody can see at the same time uh, our answers or only uh, the the person who who asks the questions. What we will do because it can be also for us difficult to, to answer uh, uh, lively to your questions. Uh, sometimes there are, there, are, there are very good questions and there are every time good questions anyway. Uh, so sometimes we need little time also to, uh, 
to to analyze and to and to prepare our answers. But we propose you to you is that we uh, we will we will keep of course the um, the the documentation. I mean I mean the track record of all the questions. Uh, we have it, and and we we will we will uh, we will sort out the questions. We will we will check if there are not if there, there is not uh, duplicates and so on. And we will we will we will see with the UIA uh, uh, team how we can uh, present you and and uh, communicate to you uh, official answers and uh, validate answers to your questions. Uh, so uh, I think uh, Charles is. is is answering a last question, but then for the question we had no time, or it, it's difficult for us to answer directly. Uh, we will we will answer you uh, later on once once we have the time to 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 sort out all of them and to enter and to analyze, of course, uh, the the questions. So thank you, everybody. I think uh, uh, we will just like uh, meet like very soon, <laughs> uh, and we waiting for your questions uh, we will be glad uh, the, the more questions you will have uh, the more uh, efficient uh, and the more clear it will be like for everybody because in fact you have uh, all the same question and expectations uh, regarding this project so please share your concern uh, online or by email or even like uh, during like the the meeting session we will have like an we will have on the spot uh, but in order to like to to, sh to share like uh, it's like better if you can just like think about the questions very quickly and then we have like a little a bit of time just like to think about it and just like to provide you like the better answer mm -hmm. and like uh, and this answer will not change like uh, within the lifespan of your project so you will, you will be able just like to stick to that answer. Thank you, Charles. My turn. I, I, I want to thank you again, everybody, to your participation and to your coming questions. Uh, and uh, there was a last point I forgot maybe to say. Uh, surely we will, we will, we will uh, send you and we will put at your disposal also this uh, training document. Uh, but maybe not after this session, but after the second one. It means tomorrow because because depending depending how happens. The session today and what was your question maybe we can adapt a little uh, we can adapt a, a little the, the, the document but uh, for, for your information of course uh, the training session is exactly the same uh, today and tomorrow so uh, if you attend it today you can also attend tomorrow if you want to, to be sure to understand everything but uh, but uh, you are free also to to to, 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 to be busy on other topics and to prepare for example the on spot intervention. <laughs> So uh, thank you very much again, and uh, we hope uh, that you, you you took advantage of these uh, training sessions. And we are sure with Charles that uh, we can we can continue with you on the spot, and uh, we hope we can answer uh, the maximum of questions that you may have. Thank you very much, everybody. The session is uh, about to terminate. See you soon on the spot. <laughs>